Rich, you're on. All right. <laughs> Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the 39th Annual Law Alumni Awards Banquet. My name is Richard Murray. I am a 2000 graduate of the law school and have the pleasure of having served as the 2019 to 2020 Chair of Law Alumni Board, and I am currently a shareholder at Polsonelli, uh, Denver. It's my pleasure to be with each of you virtually tonight as we celebrate our community and this year's Alumni Award recipients at the first ever virtual awards banquet. Tonight, we honor six individuals who exemplify the University of Colorado Law School's mission and vision through their work and achievements. But before we proceed, I wanna take a moment to honor a legend who inspired so many lawyers in this virtual room and in our community. Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg will forever remember it as a true champion of justice. And I just wanna take a moment to honor her. Next, I'd like to request that all the current alumni participating tonight to greet everyone by using the chat function and say hello. These are people to devote their time and energy to make Colorado law and its community the best it can be. Paving the way of these efforts are also full of alumni members that are joining us this evening. I'd like to ask that all the lab members also use the chat function to greet everyone. And please also include the years you served on the board. Just a couple of housekeeping matters. To help you enjoy your experience to the full night, I just have a few reminders. During the awards presentation, since we're on Zoom, everyone will be muted, uh, but we encourage you to keep your camera active function. We want this event to be as uh, interactive. Please also use the congratulatory messages uh, on the to uh, honor our award recipients, and you can find that on the event webpage. And finally, please feel free to sample the items in your customized gift baskets throughout the event. Now, please join me in welcoming our current lab chair, Hewitt Cavell, to the virtual stage. Good evening, everyone. Each year, the Law Alumni Board presents Distinguished Achievement Awards. These awards are presented on a rotating basis in nine categories and recognize our alumni who have risen to the top of our profession or made a substantial impact in their area of practice. This year's recipients are in private practice, the public sector, and solo or small firm practitioner. Since 1960, we, have also, we also award our highest honor, the William Lee Nouse Award. Nominations for these awards are accepted through the end of October and selections for next year's awards will be made in January. I invite you to nominate your fellow alumni for recognition. Information can be found on page 19 of your program. We would also like to recognize our past award recipients, who we invite to use the chat function to note the year that they received their award. Finally, we'd like to recognize our sponsors for the generosity that will support the Dean's Fund for Excellence and the Law Alumni Scholarship Fund. A list of our sponsors can be found on page four of the program. We appreciate your support. Now I'd like to invite Dean and Aya to make remarks. Good evening. Uh, I'm happy to be with you tonight to celebrate the 39th annual Colorado Law Alumni Awards Banquet. Um, and the Emmys, the virtual Emmys have nothing on us, I'm, 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 I'm assuring you, and I've been assured. Um, at the outset, I'd like to acknowledge that the University of Colorado Law School is on land uh, located within the traditional territories of the Arapaho, Cheyenne, and Ute peoples. In doing so, I recognize the history that has gone before us and, and the ongoing need to reflect on and, and take action to roll back historically rooted injustice. This evening, we're honored to have alumni, students, faculty, staff, and and friends of Colorado Law participating uh, via Zoom. As I look across my computer screen at many faces, uh, some of them have been enjoying their, their wine. Um, I, I recognize how, how lucky we are to have an engaged and, and truly supportive community. 
Well, I regret that, that this year we could not uh, be together physically as we usually are for this annual event. I am grateful for the technology that allows us to connect remotely for this a special occasion and for your adaptability during these challenging times. Um, thank you all for, for being with us. And I'd also like to take a moment to recognize our gold sponsors, uh, Chayat and Danzo, um, Gibson Dunning and Crutcher, Hogan Lovells, Polsonelli, and Wheeler Trigg O'Donnell. We appreciate all of you for your support for this event and for the law school. Year after year since I became Dean, I've, I've truly been impressed and, and inspired by significant accomplishments of our extraordinary alumni. I, you, I've come to know how you represent the excellence, innovation, and, and spirit of public service that uh, Colorado Law aspires to advance continually in the legal profession and in society locally and, and beyond. This fall semester, uh, we welcomed to Colorado Law a new class of 185 students who will be sitting among you as colleagues within a few years. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about this class. It's, a, uh, it's both diverse and academically strong. In fact, the class of 2023 is our most ethnically and racially diverse class in the school's history with 36% students of color. And this class has strong uh, academic credentials. In addition to coming to us with an impressive array of prior experience, accomplishments, and contributions. They have a median GPA of 3.65 and uh, a median LSAT of uh, 163. Among this class is the fourth cohort of leaders in law and uh, community or LILAC fellows. Uh, to date, the LILAC Fellowship Program has awarded 22 full scholarships to students from backgrounds underrepresented in in law schools and the legal profession. We also welcomed 10 LLM students who are talented lawyers from six countries and 11 new Master of Studies in Law or MSL students. Along with having a diverse and, and talented student body, we have one of the strongest faculty of any law school in the country. Our faculty are devoted to teaching our students and preparing them to make their own contributions to the legal profession and the world. I'm privileged and honored to work with such outstanding teachers and scholars. Normally, normally I'd ask our faculty to stand to be recognized, but given our remote environment, I'll, uh, I'd like to just ask uh, any faculty members who are here to, uh, to use the chat function to say hello or raise your glass and, and cheers or whatever. Um, our students and faculty are navigating uh, this current semester with impressive flexibility and determination. Over the summer, we've made massive improvements to our technology infrastructure to allow us to offer a mix of in-person and remote learning opportunities when possible. Uh, my deep thanks to our first-rate IT team, led by John Sabre for their dedication to getting this technology installed and operational and for for making continual improvements and adjustments on a daily and often nightly basis. Uh, I wanna say that there's, there's no sugarcoating that the pandemic has presented enormous logistical and emotional challenges for our faculty, staff, and students. And these challenges evolve on a daily basis. I wanna say how grateful and proud I am of the faculty for their adaptability the students for their resilience, and the staff for their unfailing support. This evening is very different from the one we planned for last spring in so many ways, but the most striking difference is not so much in how we are meeting, but whom we are missing. Over the last years, we've lost members of our community, including late Steve Farber, a giant among lawyers nationwide, and and former CU Law professor and DC Circuit judge until his passing, Stephen Williams. And very recently, we've suffered the loss of one of our beloved students uh, due to a medical condition unrelated to the pandemic. And it is with great sorrow that I acknowledge the, the, the recent loss of Sunny Flowers, this year's recipient of the Distinguished Achievement 
Silvo Small from the Lord, who passed away in July. In addition to these losses, the pandemic we are living has resulted, resulted in the loss to, of all too many uh, in our country, including members of the Colorado Law community. And as Rich just mentioned, we've had the loss of uh, Ruth Gator, Gator Ginsburg very recently. I'd like to ask for a moment of silence to remember all those in our community and the country who passed away in recent months. As tonight we celebrate posthumously signing flowers, I extend on behalf of our community condolences to his wife, Pam, and to all of you who called him a friend and a colleague. Pam has requested that Bob Grant, Sonny's friend and business partner, accept the award on his behalf. Sonny served as a champion, champion of diversity at Colorado Law, our, our anti-racism and representation initiative, which I announced in July in many ways follows in Sonny's footsteps. As you'll hear more about at the end of tonight's program, the initiative seeks to confront racism and advance greater inclusion at Colorado law and the legal profession through a range of programs and actions. We could not accomplish all that we do at Colorado law without each of you joining us this evening. We're very grateful for your support, whether it's hiring our students, uh, mentoring our students and graduates, reaching out to prospective students, providing financial support, or by, or by being here tonight, which directly supports the Law Alumni Scholarship Fund and, and the Dean's Fund for Excellence. Our community is stronger because of you. This evening, we come together to celebrate the extraordinary contributions and accomplishments of, of six members of our community. I thank each of them for their extraordinary contributions and for making a difference. I'm excited for you all to learn more about this evening's honorees. I'd like to begin with the first Dean's Choice Award, the Dean Edward C. King Making a Difference Award. This award honors someone who follows Dean King's example of making a difference in people's lives and encouraging others to do so as well. This year, it is my pleasure to honor with this award, Kristen Bronson, class of 1997. As you all know, Kristen is the city attorney for the city and county of Denver. She provides policy and legal advice to the mayor, the city council, city agencies and departments, all city boards and commissions, the city auditor, and the clerk and the recorder. Uh, please join me in viewing a, a tribute to Kristen by video. She comes in with such a uh, contagious spirit, optimistic. Um, she's so smart. She's unflappable when it comes to administering the law and protecting the people of the city. Uh, she doesn't give you what you want. She gives you what you need. And that's what you want from your attorney. Uh, her job is to protect you, to protect the city. Um, and she does it with tremendous diligence. I'm Kristen Bronson, and I'm a Denver City Attorney. Uh, I've been in the position for about three years. Uh, I run the Department of Law. I've always um, been involved in public service. My family was involved in public service. I was brought up uh, with an understanding that that was just part of kind of who you were, whether you were in um, uh, business or the public sector directly. She's tackled a number of, of important issues in addition to doing the the day-to-day -day tasks, a multitude of tasks of, of the office. Um, she's led a coalition of cities and counties to tackle uh, the opioid crisis, and she's led a number of initiatives to make Denver uh, a more welcoming place for immigrants. This is a team where they are, we are solely focused on figuring out who else needs to be at the table in making decisions. That base level of trust that is a values-driven organization, a values-driven team, is so wonderful to be a part of, and I feel very, very fortunate. 
I joke that I need to change my business card. My title should be changed to Chief Paramedic because when there is um, an emergency, uh, my job is to parachute in, kind of triage the, triage the patient, solve the problem, patch them up, and then hand them back off. I think she would even tell you that, uh, you know, when she looks back on her time as a city attorney, what she'll be most proud of is really how she looked at some of the laws and helped us with the value of reforming our laws around criminal justice. Kristen, thank you, thank you for all that you do to make a difference. Uh, please join me in celebrating Kristen by, by using the chat, raising your glass, or however, however you can. Uh, I'd like to welcome Kristen to say a few, few words. You're, Hi, you're everybody. <laughs> uh, hopefully you can hear me. Thank sure. you so much. I'm really deeply honored and humbled by this award. Um, I want to thank Dean and I. I want to thank Georgette. I want to thank Marcy Fulton, the whole team, staff, faculty at CU Law School. I loved my time at CU Law School. And um, I've been eternally grateful for the friendships that I made there and that I've made since as an alumna. Um, including relationships that, frankly, I solidify through this event every single year. So thank you so much. Um, I want to also thank my colleagues, uh, past and uh, present, and the incredible team at the City of Denver. Um, over the last four years in the City Attorney's Office, um, I've been so incredibly inspired, um, particularly in the last seven months as we faced a global pandemic, um, by the tireless efforts of city employees and particularly the city attorneys and staff and paralegals and victim advocates with whom I work um, and the way in which they tirelessly, tirelessly serve uh, to lift up and um, the residents of Denver. Uh, so because, you know, the Dean mentioned Ruth Bader Ginsburg, I wanted to um, mention a quote that she, she said something that um, struck me. Uh, she said, to be a professional, do something outside yourself, something that makes life better for those that are less fortunate. <clears throat> and she also said, fight for things you care about and do it in a way that will lead others to join you. Uh, so the greatest rewards um, really of my legal career have always been um, in my service to my community. Um, I hope that with this award, others will be inspired to seek those same types of opportunities. Um, so thank you, CU Law School, and thank you to the alumni board, and uh, to Dean Anaya, who's become such a great friend since he's joined CU Law School, um, but especially to my family, who has supported me every step of the way. <laughs> and there they are. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> That's great. Um, great to see the family. Uh, this next then second Dean's Choice Award is named for its recipient, Richard Shadden. This year's Richard Shadden Adopted Alumnus Award goes to a good friend, Gordon Gamm, for his unwavering support of Colorado law for over 15 years. He facilitated an earlier upgrade of the Whitmire courtroom technology and established the Gamm Justice Award to encourage research at Colorado law that advances social justice. Uh, join me in seeing a video about Gordon and the terrific guy he is. Uh, Gordon is a friend of the law school. He has been engaged with the law school in so many ways. He comes to many of our events. He participates in the intellectual life of the law school. It's hard, hard to imagine people more deserving of an adopted alumnus award than Gordon. He's not a graduate of this law school, but he might as well be. My name's Gordon Gam. I was born in Shreveport, Louisiana. One of the things that I didn't you know, fully realize, I guess, until I was an adult was how lucky I am to have been born to parents who loved me, who wanted me, and who had the resources to, to make it possible for me to have a fulfilling life. 
And Gordon's a very kind, generous, and fun-loving person. He's a philanthropist who's contributed uh, to many causes in our community, including to the law school. The program that I started here is the GAM Justice Program, and this was to inspire faculty members to think in terms of why do we have the laws that we do? And is, are they fair? Because a lot of students, they learn how to apply the law, but don't think in terms of the law as being a mechanism for justice itself. My initial impression of him was this was a respectful and humble kind of guy, but behind that, just a, a great deal of intellectual firepower. I really thought of the law early on as a, a wonderful way of convincing people that they should be fairly treated. Gordon is deserving of the adopted alumnus award because he is uh, a member of our community. He, it's as if he had graduated from the University of Colorado Law School. Gordon, thank you for joining the Colorado Law family as an adopted alumnus. Uh, you're welcome now to say a, a few words. Well, it's wonderful to have so many friends that are uh, graduates of CU Law and, uh, and faculty members. I know that my mother would be very proud if she was alive to know that I had been adopted by a law school. <laughs> anyway, uh, um, yeah, the, uh, uh, I was uh, one of my friends who happens to be internationally known for, as a scholar in uh, constitutional law on executive power uh, approached me, said, how did you happen to get this award? And, and I was, um, and I said, uh, well, it was, it was because uh, uh, of my writing. And uh, he said to me, writing, I didn't, you know, what is it that you've written? And he said, uh, and I said to him, a check. That was, <laughs> that seemed to me to be the right answer. So. <laughs> Anyway, um, thank you so much for making me an, an, uh, an adopted uh, alumni, and um, now I have uh, two parents, so. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Gordon, and hello, Grace. Great to see you. Uh, and thanks for all you do, Gordon, and for your writing, and keep writing. <laughs> um, I'd now like to welcome Richard Murray back uh, to the virtual podium to present the Law Alumni Board Distinguished Achievement Awards. Thank you, Dan. Uh, now, I'd like to introduce Mindy Souter, class of 2003, who is being awarded the Distinguished Achievement in Private Practice Award. Please enjoy this short video about Mindy. Mindy is someone who's incredibly understated. She doesn't have a hint of pretense. From the minute Mindy walked into the firm, um, she knew twice as much, if not more, than I ever will. She was a person who always gave her best and did amazing work, but she also really cared about the team and all the team members. She's incredibly smart, she's incredibly kind, and she really cares about people. I think the things that I'm the most proud of are primarily seeing the people that I work with grow. Mindy has carved out a career for herself as one of the most sought after and successful patent litigators in the United States. She's someone who's shown herself to master technical details and then translate that into the courtroom. That's something that not many people are able to do. From a professional sense, Mindy is incredibly bright. She brings a technical background to cases that are often difficult for judges and jurors to understand, but she's able to talk to people like they are people. She's steeped in what the technology is, but she has such a gift of communication with others. What I think is so gratifying about practicing law in many ways is the breadth of people I can still touch with my practice. She's not looking out for herself. She's looking out for the team and the client, and you can see that in her work. She cares about other people. She cares about the interchange of ideas, and she's a terrific leader in our legal communities. We're lucky to have her.
You're back, Richard. <laughs> um, I'd like to welcome Mindy to the virtual stage to say a few words. Oh, well, thank you. Um, that was that was quite touching, and I, I, I can't express how honored I am to be among such an esteemed group of people and how honored I am to be recognized by the Alumni um, Association and the School of Law. Um, I never expected to be here when I graduated. I never expected to be in front of you all, certainly, and I really didn't expect for it to happen under these sorts of circumstances. So as I scroll through all of your videos and I'll see all of your faces, I can't wait to see you all again in person to get to greet you and hug you in person next year when we're at this banquet live. So thank you so much for your support. Thank you, Natalie, Nina, and Phil for your kind words. Believe me, the feelings are all mutual. I can't express how um, grateful and lucky I am to have worked with you and to learn from all of you over the years. And I also want to say thanks to my colleagues at Wilmer Hale. Um, they really exemplify the very best in the profession. They practice law with excellence, but with kindness and respect and with always the best interests of our country and um, our clients in mind. And I, they make me a better lawyer every day. Um, and of course, biggest shout out goes to my family. <clears throat> I wouldn't be here if it weren't for them. They have supported me every step of the way as well. Ever since I shared this crazy idea of going back to law school as a second career with them, my husband has been supported, uh, supportive. My kids have picked up the balls that I've dropped along the way. They're now all amazing independent young adults and I'm very flattered to be able to call them my family and very grateful for all that they've done. We all know what a hard profession this is and it really takes a village and I'm very lucky to know all of you, to get to work with all of you and to serve in this community um, with this great university. So thank you so much for the recognition. I truly appreciate it. Congratulations, Mindy. Um, Congratulations, Mindy. Uh, next, let's learn more about Steve Zwick, class of 1977, who is being awarded the Distinguished Achievement in Public Sector Award. Please enjoy this video about Steve. Once you start engaging in a conversation with Steve, it's just a back and forth instantly. And I know it's hard to remember exactly what we talked about in my interview, but as I remember it, we got into everything about Telluride and the history. It was a free flowing discussion with him where I felt at ease almost instantly. And that's what Steve, I think, makes anyone uh, feel when he interacts with them, whether it's a member of the, the, the public who's interacting with him in a, in a board context, or it's one of the elected officials that's interacting with Steve in a more formal capacity. He really has a very engaging way of interacting with people. When I got out of law school, I had absolutely no idea that I'd wind up spending over 30 years working in county government. That's just sort of serendipitous. I mean, it just sort of happens. Don't let Steve's unassuming persona fool you. He's a very interesting, fascinating, well-read, very thoughtful guy. I was interested in actually dealing with real cases and real people. And some people aren't. I mean, you know, people were all different. He spent 40 years, his entire 40 year career in public service. He did it, obviously not to get rich or famous, but because he, he believes in good government and, and fairness. And he did a great job for for legal aid and especially for San Miguel County the last 20, 24 years. He has dedicated his life right out of law school to public service work in the legal field. At his heart, Steve is the kind of person who cares about you as an individual. He really kind of takes this notion of community uh, to a very individual level. He really does care about the people that he has interacted with over time um, because I think that they've, um, they have formed a part of, of his life as well. He was involved in so many notable issues here in San Miguel County in the Telluride area 
for so long that people know his name and his hard work over that period of time. Uh, and it really leaves an impression on people. I'd like to welcome Steve to the virtual stage to say a few remarks. Thank you very much. I really do appreciate the opportunity, especially to Dina and Naya. I've had a chance to meet over the years and also to the members of the Law School Alumni Board and distinguished guests and friends and colleagues. And so all the other folks have indicated this is an honor and a privilege that is really quite unexpected. And I thank the Alumni Board and the other folks involved when I graduated in 1977, more than 40 years ago, I did not expect that I'd spend over 30 years of my professional career working, serving the public in Colorado in county government. Having had the opportunity to work with county and municipal and state and federal officials on all sorts of public policy issues, it's been a very interesting experience. Throughout my public sector career, I was most fortunate to be able to work with county government officials and staff, as well as members of the public, whom I gained invaluable experience. And hopefully, we're usually respective to my legal counsel, but I think I probably learned a lot more from the people I interacted with than they learned from me. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank the law school and the alumni board for this very unanticipated recognition. But even more, I would like to thank all those folks, the county officials, as well as the many attorneys and others that I have had the privilege to work with over the past more than 30 years. Several of those folks are attending this evening's uh, meeting, this gathering. And I remember that whatever I may have accomplished professionally in these past four decades, I think was in large measure the result of their efforts and support. I, this is one of those things that clearly none of us do it on our own. And I think it's real important to be aware of all the support and assistance that we get from others in our careers. And I want to take this opportunity, obviously, to humbly and with gratitude thank the law school and the alumni board. Like I said, 40 years ago, I don't think I ever thought I would be participating in this type of a ceremony. And I really would like to thank all the folks involved in this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Steve, and congratulations. Next, um, next, as you heard earlier from Dean and Naya, uh, Sonny Flowers was a champion to his community and to Colorado law. It's my honor to share this video about Sonny Flowers, class of 1971, who was being awarded the Distinguished Achievement in Solo Small Firm Award. Sonny is a complex and wonderful human being. We've been friends and buds since the late 60s. I was up on the hill. Sonny was on the corner on a bicycle. He was tall, thin, uh, African-American. And so that immediately attracted my attention. And we have been uh, fast friends since 1964. We've hung out together, we've traveled together, we go to conventions together, we talk about cases together. I not only met Sonny, but I met his mother, I met his dad. He was one of the architects for the civil rights movement. So he was a, a very iconic figure and uh, he made such an impression on me that I changed my major from uh, uh, being an engineer to political science uh, so that I could be a lawyer. I had a great start in life. Not a great financial start, but a great life start. I wasn't the greatest law student. I didn't particularly like law school. I liked the clinical uh, aspect, the Legal Aid and Defender program, and I got to try cases as a law student, and that became my focus. 
the people that I've met, the people that I think I've helped, the collegial atmosphere of the profession, the opportunities to help the people that I represent. Those are the important aspects for me. Sonny's highly intelligent. He uh, knows and feels that he has a certain responsibility uh, to be the best that he can be, that he can reach back to others. I represented a guy in a really serious criminal matter. He comes back to Colorado every year. We see each other, we talk, and I like to think that I helped him, but I know that he helped me because he made me feel like what I had done was worthy. Please join me in welcoming Bob Grant, class of 1976, to accept Sonic Flowers' award. There we go. Good evening, everyone. I met Sonny Flowers in January of 1977, when we were both rookie DAs in the Adams County District Attorney's Office. I stayed in that office and became the elected district attorney. Sonny left after a few years of trial practice and went on to make some money. Sonny was a passionate man. Sonny was passionate about his profession, about the law. Sonny was passionate about justice, justice for all. Sonny was passionate about his clients, about his friends. He was passionate about his university, his law school. Most of all, he was passionate about his wife of 40 years, Pam who sits here with me tonight. You know, one of the things that, that drew me to Sonny was not only his passion, but his intelligence. And I know uh, that his loss is still palpable and raw for all of us. He's been gone, lost his battle to pancreatic cancer less than two months ago, um, and it still hurts. He, was a, had a rich and full life. His life was full of contribution. He particularly enjoyed helping others, not just clients and not just friends, but especially young folks, young people that uh, needed uh, a hand up and a shoulder to lean on. Uh, he taught them about the law and he taught them about life. He especially liked uh, working with young athletes and so, so many young black lawyers who are better now for having known him. And he helped them and guided them and gave them advice to achieve what they could best achieve in life. He was passionate about diversity and equality. He was passionate about, and, and that was a lifelong passion for Sonny. Uh, for those of you who are able and have the wherewithal and would like to make a monetary gift, Pam and I would encourage you to, to go to the CU Law Foundation website and contribute to the Penfield Tate the Second Scholarship Fund uh, to further diversity uh, causes in the law school. Penn was the mayor of Boulder and one of Sonny's early mentors and law partners in the, in the early 70s. These awards are important, and I can hear Sonny telling you why. Sonny would say that these awards are meant to uh, provide a, the value of them is meant to provide guidance, to provide a path, provide a way forward for people uh, who would contribute and, and want to achieve the same things that the award recipients achieved. His passion for equality and equal justice under the law is something that we should all aspire to. But particularly, I would ask that, and, and Pam and I both uh, would ask that you follow his example. We humbly and with great gratitude uh, accept this award on his behalf. And we ask that you would uh, advance the cause of equality and advance the cause of diversity and advance the cause of equal justice, both under the law and in the law, uh, as you go on to your own practice. Thank you so much to the alumni board and to the law school. And thank you for recognize, recognizing Sonny's passion. Thanks. 
Thank you so much, Bob. Uh, we are now at the final award of the evening, the William Lee Naus Award. Please enjoy this background on the person behind the award. <laughs> My grandfather, William Lee Naus, was born in Uray, Colorado in the late 1880s. He ended up being a graduate of the University of Colorado Law School in 1911. My grandfather really was a man for Colorado, as was noted in one of the Denver newspapers. He uh, was a man for all seasons in that, from a judicial standpoint, he served on the Colorado Supreme Court and was Chief Justice of the Court. From a legislative standpoint, he was elected both to the State House of Representatives and the State Senate and became president of the Senate, President Pro Tem. And in the executive branch, he became governor of Colorado. We think probably the only person in the history of the United States to serve as the top office holder in all three branches of government. And in 1950, Harry Truman was president of the United States. And, uh, he offered the U.S. federal judgeship to my grandfather, and he had a tough decision to make. He was governor on one hand, a very popular governor, but he loved the law on the other hand. So he did accept that appointment to the United States uh, Federal Court, District Court, and uh, stayed there until he died in 1959. Well, the award presented by the law school is the one the family cherishes the most. Um, a lot of people asked him in his life, what did he prefer, the executive branch of being governor or the judicial branch and the law? And he, on balance, preferred the law. He was a true public servant. I think it's my turn. Um, so it's now my pleasure to uh, recognize the recipient of the Naus Award, the highest honor Colorado law bestows upon a graduate. The award is given to an outstanding alumnus in recognition of outstanding achievement and sustained service to Colorado law. Uh, I want to take a moment to acknowledge the Naus family who I uh, believe is here or members of, of them here th this, this evening, including uh, Bob Naus, who we just saw, a grandson of William Lee Naus. Uh, thank you, thank you, Bob, for, uh, and others of your family for, for being with us this evening. Uh, this year, uh, the Law Alumni Board grants the Naus Award to the Honorable Chief, du Chief Justice Nathan B. Coates, who has had a tremendous career in public service. Please enjoy a brief video tribute to this year's NAUS Award recipient. The best way for me to describe this is when you're a coworker of Ben Coates, it's like being given a gift every day. He has a, a brilliant legal mind, one of the most brilliant legal minds that, that I think anybody will ever know. I could tell from the very beginning just how knowledgeable he was and how smart he was. I sought advice from him really for the better part of 15 years, and in that time, I always trusted the advice I had from him. He's not a partisan. He cares deeply about justice. I was one of those kids probably that first and foremost just didn't want to leave Boulder. So, and, uh, so I went to law school there as well. That was back in the days when there was a conscription army, you know, still right at the tail end of Vietnam. So I actually went into the army for um, a few years and then came back and went to law school. He has this uncanny ability to look at an, a legal issue, a legal question, and spot an aspect of it that no one else has. It, it has determined my life, or the other way around, as you put it. The, the way I've wanted to lead my life, or what I've done, has revolved around uh, my work, to a large extent. Ben is absolutely deserving of this. Uh, it really is this commitment that he made to public service, early in his career, 
that he followed that commitment uh, through all of the work that he's done early on in his career, made a move to the Attorney General's office then the Denver District Attorney's office, where he was really, uh, he was really an advisor for all of the prosecution community in Colorado, not just in Denver, and then to the Supreme Court. That's just a life of public service. I suppose what I find rewarding is really the nature of the work and the process that we're doing. Partly it's selfish in the sense that it's fun to do. I, I think a, there is a great deal of satisfaction comes with having an effect on the judicial system, on the, on, on the law. I think he really enjoys good stories. You know, he, he likes um, everyday human stories. Really for Ben, the, the move from um, advocate to um, judicial arbiter at the highest level of the appellate bench in Colorado was exactly the right move because that's at his core, justice. Some people talk about doing public service as if it's kind of a chore, but I think for many of us it's not a chore, it is a little selfish because you get so much satisfaction. I think it's important that the Naus Award goes to Ben in an acknowledgement that, you know, there's a lot about lawyering that has everything to do with serving the public, and Ben's the best of those servants. Wow, as, as that video captures the Honorable uh, Coates' longtime devotion and outstanding reputation in the Colorado legal community, make him a truly, uh, truly deserving of the uh, NAUS Award. So please join me in congratulating the Honorable Nathan Coates, or Ben as he's known. Um, and I'd like to invite uh, the Chief Justice to, to say a few words. Well, Thanks, Dean. Let's see, am I on? You are. Yes, I am. Yes, <laughs> um, well, that was quite a quite a quite a video. I, I appreciate that. Obviously, friends of mine. You know, while they were doing that, I was thinking that of old Stooges gag where they walk into a room and somebody greets them with the words "gentlemen" and they immediately look over their shoulder to see if who he's referring to. Um, <clears throat> but. Really and truly, thanks. Thanks very much. That's a, a very, very kind thing. Um, I think I also want to thank right away the alumni board. Um, I appreciate very much them thinking of me for this award. I've been aware of the uh, William Lee Naus Award for a long time. I've spoken on behalf of other people who were receiving it. Um, I never really thought about receiving it myself, but it's a tremendous honor, and um, I'm I'm very grateful for that. Let me also thank uh, the lots of friends and family and colleagues and former colleagues uh, who are, and by the way, lots of uh, former law clerks. Maybe that's one of the things about being in the judiciary for a long time. You build up a lot of law clerks who then do outstanding things on their own and they find themselves in positions where they can honor you. Uh, not a bad thing, but, uh, and, and uh, so thanks to all, all of those people. By the way, I, I think I have a lot of family here, so I'm glad they saw that uh, so they can appreciate something about me. Um, let me. Let me, though, go on and take just a minute to say something about the law school. Um, I've kept an association with the law school and got to do things with them for a long time, even taught one semester out there. But uh, since I've been chief for the last some years, and Dean and I has been the dean, he's invited me out to greet the um, incoming class each year and to talk to them about uh, the meaning of the profession that they're getting into, um, to discuss the oath that uh, all lawyers take to become members of this society, and uh, but also to talk some about um, my experience in law school and just very quickly, one of the things I have said to them in the past and, and always mean it and I'll repeat it right here, and that is for me, um, law school was just literally a transformative experience. 
And by that, I don't mean I learned something that I didn't know before, and now I've gone out and, and you know, applied it. But I, it, I, well, I mean in the sense that it just changed my way of thinking about the world. Um, and uh, it changed my, the way I evaluate evidence, the way I evaluate arguments, the, the way the amount of confidence I place in things, the assumptions that I held without giving them much thought. Um, really, almost since my first semester in law school, I would say I haven't looked at the world in quite exactly the same terms. And I try to impart that to the, to the incoming students and hope they will look at things in a similar way and that it will have a similar effect on them. Real quick, the one other thing I frequently say to them though is there are so many things you can do with a law degree, with legal training, that nobody should be doing something that they're not feeling fulfilled by. And um, I was one of those people of my generation probably who went to law school, not because I had one particular thing in mind. I probably, in fairness, I would have to say I didn't know what I wanted to do when I grew up and I was postponing the decision by keeping as many options open as possible. And it turned out to be a good choice. Um, I have to say uh, very truthfully, I have never read it, regretted for a day um, making that choice. Um, my career may be more fortuitous than planned, but nevertheless, I have never for a moment regretted choosing this kind of training and going into this kind of profession. One last thing I'd like to say, uh, hopefully by the time these awards are given out next year, things are back to normal, but I have to thank very much the folks who uh, organized this, uh, did a fabulous job coming up with a creative way to make these uh, awards very significant. And I appreciate it and I thank you. Thank you, Justice Coates. And thanks for all the wisdom and inspiration that you've imparted on, on our students and all you've done for uh, Colorado and for the legal profession. Uh, before we conclude our program, uh, I'd like to share a little bit about our anti-racism and representation initiative. I launched the initiative in July with a list of nine objectives and related steps for the law school to take to confront racism and advance the representation of those from groups that have been marginalized and underrepresented in legal education and the legal profession. Since the initiative's launch, I've heard from several of you sharing ideas and interest in getting involved. Thank you for your support. I'd now like to share a brief video about the initiative and highlight the importance of this work. Our world is plagued with inequality and injustice. The last few months have laid bare the racism that has long existed in our country. The cries and chants on the streets punctuate the pain and frustration that racism still widely yields. I'm Jim Anaya. I am the Dean of the University of Colorado Law School. As lawyers and educators, we have important roles in society that have an undeniable impact on issues of equality and racial justice. We have a special obligation to work to embed anti-racism into the legal education we provide and to confront racism and inequality in every way we can. We see the manifestations of the racism that has persisted over time in the lack of adequate representation of people of color among our lawmakers and judges and in the legal profession more generally. Representation uh, matters because there is a lack of trust in our judicial system by black people, people of color, poor people, and many young people. Representation matters because in a world where we have differences, 
We need to see all of those differences sitting at the table. Representation matters because there are young children of color across the country today who are going to be tomorrow's Supreme Court justices, partners at law firms, and problem solvers. And they need to know that they can get there. Representation matters because it shapes how society views women and minorities, but it also shapes how we view ourselves. As a black man who's a law student, I not only serve as an example to other black individuals aspiring to do the same, but I gain my affirmation and inspiration from the black lawyers and legal professors who have already defied the odds. Representation matters because America's strength is its diversity. Representation matters because we are better when we consider the past that brought us together. Recent acts of racial injustice have sparked new energy and growing resolve to confront racism and to break down the barriers to genuine inclusion. The Anti-Racism and Representation Initiative was born out of my renewed commitment to take and promote bold, practical steps to confront racism and advance inclusion. This initiative includes a range of actions to be a more inclusive law school, to work toward a legal profession that reflects and is trusted by the people it serves, and to channel our programming to educate about and address racism and its ongoing effects. The Colorado law community has a long history of coming together for the greater good. I hope you will join me in the important work that reclaims the country's founding promise of justice and equality for all. The late John Lewis said, If not us, who? If not now, then when? This is a statement in which John Lewis is calling every American to action, to do something, to say something. Do not remain silent and let the status quo destroy our democracy. We must face the injustice where it stands. Please join me. Join us. Representation matters. Representation matters. La representación es importante. Representation matters. Representation matters. Representation matters. Representation matters. So please join us in the important work to confront racism and advance representation. Uh, much of this work requires financial support and generating that support is my highest fundraising priority this year. And for that reason, all gifts to the Dean's Fund for Excellence over the next year will be directed to the initiative. Uh, funds will go to scholarships and other support for students from underrepresented groups and to various law school programs that advance racial justice. Please consider a donation to help us with this important work. You can learn more about all the different aspects of the initiative by visiting the initiative's page, uh, webpage on our, uh, on our uh, website. You can find the URL on, on the back page of, of your program. Uh, I'd like to now welcome uh, Hewitt back uh, to the virtual stage for the closing remarks. But uh, before I do that, I'd just like to thank all the terrific people, members of our staff who had put this, who have put this wonderful work together and worked so hard to do it. Uh, Nick and Julia, who produced the, the wonderful videos with the backing of our IT team. Our team. Yesenia Delgado, uh, uh, Georgette Hill, and Jill White, uh, who are, have worked behind the scenes in every aspect. And then of course, our terrific IT team led by John Zabray, who who made it all happen. Uh, th thank you all. And thank you all for being here. 2020 has been a year that we won't forget. We've seen protests around the, or for several months around the world um, because of racial injustice. We cannot, we should not, and we must not forget why so many people were moved to protest in the middle of a global pandemic. People are yearning for a change. As attorneys, we are uniquely situated to help. I encourage you to find a way to get in the ring. Have those difficult conversations that change hearts and minds. Then use your skills to make a difference. Let's get to work. Before we move to our post reception, I invite our honorees along with Bob Grant, Dean Anaya, and Richard Murray to the virtual stage for a photo. I ask that these individuals remain in this room.
as we close our banquet, I want to thank you on behalf of the Law Alumni Board, the Law and the Law School for attending this year's virtual event. If you would like to visit with this year's honorees, we invite you to visit the event webpage posted in the chat function on Zoom or through the link um, from the email that was sent this morning. On that webpage, look to the right look in the right column under the header "Post Reception with Honorees." By clicking on the name of an honoree, you will be able to join a virtual room with them. Thank you again for joining us, and we hope to see you next year. The honorees will be with you in the room shortly. Thanks again, and have a good night.